This presentation is entitled Marketing Yourself for a Better Career. Hans Ekman provides linchpin leadership in consulting for rapidly evolving companies with 20 of his 20, over 25 years experience creating workflow and support optimization solutions across diverse industries. Hans is part of the SunTrust Innovation Programs team at SunTrust Bank where he helps develop disruptive programs and products that drive innovation, process improvement, and quality teammate engagement across the enterprise. Hans co-founded the SunTrust Business Analyst Center of Excellence and has presented internationally at conferences and for professional organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our speaker, Hans Ekman. switch over to the real presentation. Thank you again for coming out. Thank you for everybody. All right, so I um, want to start off by asking everybody in the front row, this will just be briefly, stand up a second, just for a second. Oh, now we all know it's in the front. All right, if all of you were competing for a job, you're looking at the first four and a half people who, would I, who I would interview for that job. Because engaged BAs, engaged project managers, engaged people, actively engage and are up front. You can sit back down. Second row, you might make tier two. The rest of you, go talk to one of the staffing companies. <laughs> Everything we do, whether we know it or not, ends up feeding into our marketing, into our brand. So how many people are, um, and you, so let me, that's, so how many people would love to have a better job, a better role, or better recognition in their company? Few people either too nervous or their boss is sitting here or they're completely and totally satisfied. Um, how many people um, interviewed have, have interviewed for a job today? Anybody have an interview today? All right. Now, everybody who didn't raise your hand, raise your opposite hand right now. Whether you know it or not, you all interviewed for a job today. You have all met or talked to somebody. I'm interviewing for a job that doesn't exist right now. Because at some point, any one of you could say, I want that dude to help us out. I met somebody, I've met a ton of people here. I know the go-to people. I know the people I call in cities, in areas, make recommendations because they have established a brand, they've established a value. And I spread that around as much as I can. Um, so it's, what I'm hoping you'll get out of today is a different way of looking at things. So to start off, um, uh, first, Anybody who's tweeting, um, if not, um, uh, feel free to start. It's a lot of fun. Um, got the at Project Summit is the hashtag. Uh, excuse me, the Twitter account for this event. Uh, feel free to tag me or tweet about this. If you don't know and you're starting to tweet, PMOT and BAOT are conversations about project management on Twitter and business analysis on Twitter. Every conversation, everything people are sharing, uh, can be found with those hashtags. Now, for those of you that are nervous about taking lots of notes, I'm sorry I don't have a handout in this session because I'm still limited to 50 pounds in my suitcase and used them up yesterday. Um, but all, this presentation is available for download right now on the conference website. It's also available on my website, which you can grab one of the green cards. This and every presentation I've done um, is available for free download, free use, free sharing. Uh, it's just my way of giving back to a community and industry that's been so good for me. Um, so let me start off with a few disclaimers. Um, I kind of know this content, um, so it's not going to be a, a lot of fun if I'm just sitting here talking. So I want you to engage. I want you to challenge. The more you participate, the more you're going to get out of this. Um, also, this is stuff that works for me. I've spent over 20 years working with an amazing branding and marketing um, manager who's 72. He's written several books. He's sold seven of the nine companies he started. And he has been a thorn in my side this entire time trying to get me to clarify my purpose and my branding. So the lessons he's taught me about marketing and branding were a significant part that went into creating this presentation. So I can share those wisdoms with people that don't have a chance to meet Dusty's. Um, universal disclaimer, everything here is my own personal views and does not represent the company uh, that I currently belong to so that now they can't fire me for doing this. Um, also, this and all of my presentations, no animals were harmed in the creation of this. But I do hope you will support your local pet rescue groups. 
So how many people would love to know at the end of the project what was going to happen? Like, wouldn't it be great if we knew what the solution looked like before we started? Like, not the solution they said they wanted, but the real solution, what really happened? Or if we were taking a test or a certification exam, wouldn't it be awesome if they gave us the answers ahead of time? So I want to do that here. So I'm going to give you the conclusions so that you can think about them as we go through and see if you agree with me. So the first is paramount to this entire thing. Marketing is the exploitation of your uniqueness. And I'm going to, we'll go into these in details, but I want you to think about that. Marketing is the exploitation of what makes you unique. Self-marketing, building your brand, being consistent, has to become part of your everyday activities because it already is. So you can let it control you or you can take control of it. It's like if you're driving in traffic, you can choose to stay in one lane regardless of what happens, or you can choose to change lanes or change routes to find a more efficient way to get into your destination. Last, you've got to focus on your value and connect personally with your audience. Okay, so um, let's look a little bit about marketing. Why do we buy anything? Why do we buy something? We think we like it. We like it. We need it. We want it. Okay. Solves a need. Okay. Solves a need. Yes. I'm selling it to you, so I've convinced you. Okay, but but why am I deciding? So if I if if two of them, yes. I don't need it. I do not want it, but I just like it. Okay, so you just like it. It's just something fun to have. Okay. What if there's two of us trying to sell you something? How would you make a decision? How do you know which one to buy? Yes? The one you like is who you're going to go to. The one you like? Okay. What if, um, so what if I've got a beautiful new um, <laughs> iPhone? The latest one, it's a prototype, it hasn't come out. Or I can give you a Motorola flip phone. Which one do you like better? The iPhone? Okay, but it's $4 million. The flip phone, I will pay you $1,000 to use. Which one do you want? <laughs> What if I change that and I say I'll give you a second generation iPhone plus $1,000, or you can pay me $5,000 to have the latest iPhone? Which one do you want? I got to be, so a few people are like, I'll still take the new one. It's awesome. <laughs> a few people are like, you know what? I could put up with the old one, and for $1,000, I could buy the current generation of the iPhone, and then I'll ditch the other one on ePay. So the only reason we buy something is perceived value. We work hopefully because we get joy, but we work because we're getting value out of it. We feel we're contributing, we're valued, it's driving what interests us, and we're getting paid. And we can exchange that payment for really fun stuff like iPhones and trips um, and cars and houses. You know, it's kind of miserable to not have any of those things. So it's not about price. It's never about price, it's about value. And that applies to, to all of us for everything we're doing. If I'm looking to hire somebody, I am taking the company's money, and as a steward for the company's money, I have to know that I am getting value out of that person. And do you think that's equal value I'm looking for? If I'm gonna pay somebody $50,000, or 100,000, or 150,000, am I expecting to get 50,000, 100,000, and 150,000 dollars of value out of each of them? No, what am I expecting? More. More? I gotta have a margin on that. The company's gotta be profitable. There's costs built in everywhere. So yes, I'm looking for a two to 10 times multiplier of value from that person. And if I can get that, their value vastly out uh, exceed, whoever I pick, their value vastly exceeds their um, competitors. So tell me, for the purpose of this, what is marketing? Value in someone else's eyes. Awareness. Creating value in someone else's eyes, creating awareness. It's, a, it's communicating that unique value to the person. Communicating the unique value. Same one. Enhancing your, your value proposition. Enhancing your value proposition. There was one over here I missed. Creating value. Creating value. Okay. So I gave you the answer at the beginning. It's the exploitation of your uniqueness. So Let's break that down a little bit. So it is about communicating, it is, um, but it, it's got to have two parts. First, how many, uh, so let me, sorry, I forgot to ask, how many PMs do we have here? 
How many BAs? How many hybrids? How many others? Everything depends on what's needed. Okay, thinking about that for either role, I've got an awesome new job in a new startup as part of our innovation team, and I'm looking for somebody here. How many people are good communicators? How many people can adequately document needs? How many people are great at running facilitated sessions? How many people are um, fast thinkers, team players, proficient in Microsoft Office? <laughs> okay, which one of you would I interview? Did any, all right, I got a volunteer. Did any of those things set you apart? How many project managers can do a project schedule and manage within the three constraints? Think about your resume and your LinkedIn profile right now. How many jobs list those skills that every single person in the room has? That's not unique. That's not special. That doesn't set you apart. That's noise. If you can't communicate, I can tell because your resume is going to stink. Um, when I talk to you and screen you on the phone, I'll know immediately. Telling me isn't going to happen. Um, there's a, a quote, it, almost inappropriately, um, uh, attributed to uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson that says, your actions speak so loudly, or thunder so loudly, I cannot hear the words you say. What you do, intentional or not, overcomes anything you can say. You, it, you can't back it up. So what about exploitation? That word gets a bad rap a lot of times. Couldn't you think taking advantage of not a value proposition? But it's taking that value and exploiting it in every opportunity you can. It is about taking that and making sure that everybody knows what your value proposition is. And it's not like I was doing obnoxiously to get you in here, which was holding up a sign and screaming, you really want to come here, although sometimes it is. It's about your actions. It's about what you do. It's about inserting stories at the right time. So we're going to go over some of the techniques on that. So to have successful marketing, first, you've got to find out what's unique about you. I had an argument and, uh, with, uh, actually I have a two-year running argument with an awesome BA named Rosie Russell in Atlanta. She is the best, deep, complicated process analysis and documenting BA I have ever met. She can unwind the most convoluted, complex systems and operations and procedures and represent them accurately and concisely in diagrams and knows when to decompose them into other areas. And I keep, every time I introduce her, I'm like, if you need the best process BA ever, the best detail-oriented process BA, you need to hire Rosie. And she keeps getting mad at me about that a little bit. She's like, but I know how to do a session. I know how to write requirements. I can write use cases. And I'm like, Rosie, you have to, over 30 years as a BA. Everybody already knows you can do that. That's not unique. That's not special. That's not where you're going to exceed. There are better facilitators. There's always somebody better. So, but if you find out what's unique, that can set you apart in the market. Now, being unique and being able to exploit it is you've got to be able to connect with people. If I don't understand or the value you're telling me isn't valuable to me, it's not going to help. So when we were hiring designers recently, um, we looked at illustrators and graphic designers and video producers and industrial designers, and I kept getting into a debate with um, one of our team leads because he wanted an industrial manager, because, uh, industrial designer. But I was like, we don't design physical products. We don't design anything or build anything in the physical world. They're doing some really cool stuff. They're awesome. I like the way their brains think, but it doesn't translate to what we're doing. So their value proposition didn't fit. Now, if I can refer them to somebody else, which I've done, I've interviewed people like, oh boy, you're horrible for our company, but let me introduce you to someone else who is awesome and could really use you. And this is the part that is the, if you want to know why sales in your organization fails, Here's the number one reason, and it's the same thing for you, is you fail to close the sale because you never ask for the contract. You never ask for the action. Your marketing doesn't do any good if there isn't a call to action. And that call to action may be soft. It may be you know, that you're enhancing your reputation in a certain space so that you'll be top of mind if something comes up. Or it could be, I'd like you to introduce me to some of your friends because I think I'm ready for a new opportunity. 
So there's got to be an action, and you've got to control it and be uh, very aware of it. So let's take a little look at why marketing is important. How many people are now interested in buying this skincare product? <laughs> in essence, this is what we're doing on LinkedIn, in our emails, in our meetings, is we think, we know the before and the after, but is it what other people are seeing as the before and after? You know how expensive it is to run an ad? How many people saw this? And not only saw this, that this got reposted on the internet, and it didn't get fixed? This is happening all the time. Your work, your legacy is always out there. Um, but also, you've got to have a value proposition that makes people want to take action. How many people want to go shopping in this store? <laughs> Again, it's a failed attempt, and it's not, it's not delivering the marketing they want. And sometimes we just don't understand that the message we think we're saying <laughs> isn't the message that's being conveyed, conveyed by what we do. So keeping this in mind, um, I, I'd like to take just a couple of volunteers to give me their pitch on what makes them unique. Now, I know I've already set a few people up because normally you'd say, hey, I'm a business analyst with 27 years of experience or seven years of experience or, and I'm a great communicator and we've already said those don't set you apart. But anyone want to share a quick pitch? It won't be perfect, but it'll never be perfect. Yes? If you'd like, anywhere you want to face. It depends on who you want to impress. If there's more of them out there and they live here. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Nick and I help uh, companies uh, become successful by deploying uh, uh, business transformation pro you know, programs and uh, you know, I help uh, resolving those challenges by being a great problem solver and able to deliver the projects under extremely tight deadlines. Awesome, thank you. Now as we move, that's great, everyone give a quick round of applause. Um, the other thing he's done, two things that have set him apart in my mind. He's volunteered for this conference. Even though it's the first event, and he's forced to go to sessions that he doesn't care about because he's stuck in the room and doesn't get to hop around, he volunteered. That set him apart from a lot of people. Um, I always love looking for people who volunteer. Um, so the key is, you've really got to know yourself. And this is painful. So I want everyone uh, that's convenient, pop out your phone, switch it to camera mode, and switch it to selfie mode. <laughs> You're not going to have to take a picture, but just quickly pop it up. Now, when you see what's looking back at you, is that an accurate representation of you? Is that you? <laughs> kind of. So it's, it's not someone else. It's you. But it's a small portion of you. Okay, you can put the phones away. It's a portion of you. It is a single perspective of you. It is a two-dimensional view of you. And that is really what our marketing ends up being. Is it's, you, you don't want to tell everybody everything, but you've really got to know who you are um, and, and, again, what makes you unique. So are you just a job? I mean, think about how stupid our resumes are. A series of jobs, chronologically ordered, listing by titles, that may or may not apply, I didn't discover until I'd been working for 10, almost 15 years that my affliction was called business analysis and that there was a whole community of people that shared my affliction and there was job titles. I never had that title. I just did things a certain way and then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I found people that were defective like me. It's awesome. <laughs> so is that job history reflective of you? Um, are you just a collection of skills? Think about when you list out skills or software or domains or industries. It's not that those aren't important, but is that who you truly are? If you're ever questioning that, pop up your phone and look and say, okay, it's, it's a little bit like the mirror. I'm getting a different reflection than I'm used to seeing. I'm getting, to me it looks reversed, but that's how everybody else sees me. Um, I. No, you know, when I hear my voice recorded, it drives me insane. And I almost want to apologize to everyone who hears me talk because I'm like, oh, I can't stand hearing myself. But I have to take that into account and know that 
it is part of who I am, and so I need to do work on it and improve and do the best job I can. So when we talk about being unique, if you're talking about skills, you are a commodity. If you're talking about base things that I could list and you could check off whether or not you can do them, anybody can do them, and all I'm going to do is look for somebody that can do an adequate enough job at the lowest possible cost. When you look at the types of jobs that are outsourced or offshored, they are commodity type jobs. We have taken all, stripped all the value away from them and said, just do it cheaper. Some companies have said, it's not that I'm doing it cheaper using an outsourced company, but they actually provide a better value. They can provide a better service, a faster service, at a better price point. So it does make sense. And that's when you have value, it makes you a linchpin. And um, at the back of this, I've got some book recommendations, but a must read, if you put anything else down and read it, it will change your life, is Linchpin by Seth Godin, G-O-D-I-N. He is like a godfather of marketing. Um, he's like Don Corleone of, uh, of marketing. And he talks about your skill, your value being your art, that we're artists. And at an early age, we start, stop thinking about us ourselves as being artists. But who else can walk into a room of crazy lunatics and have them accomplish one goal that none of them cared about? Tell me that isn't art. Now, you can bludgeon your way through that, but that's not art. Anybody can just force people through so I want to use, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a look at uh, LinkedIn. So looking at the first one, dynamic leader with the ability to drive change and a proven track record of high accomplishments in various areas. How many people want to talk to this person? Okay, a few hands. Why do you want to talk to them? They're dynamic. They've got proven accomplishments and they're, they're multi, I don't know, awesome. different areas. Yeah. Okay, they're dynamic. They've got proven accomplishments. What did they accomplish? Well, until you talk to them, you don't know. So now, so okay, so as a teaser, maybe it is. Um, dynamic leader. All they've done here, though, is use buzzwords. They've, they've created the excitement of what they think you want to hear, but can it get lost in the noise? How many people might have this headline? I'll bet every single person in this room could potentially have that headline, and it would be accurate. So it's not unique. It's not a differentiator. 15 years of experience leading teams of 10 to 20 staff members manage 30 plus products, projects ranging from 100,000 to 1.7 million. Okay, better or worse? Okay, a little bit better. So at least we know their experience, where they fit in. We've got a little bit more actionable information when it comes to that. Um, but they managed over 30 plus projects ranging from 100,000 to 1.7 million. Okay, is that good or bad? Bad. Is it? Could be good for someone else, so we don't know. So we don't have any perspective. Um, and this is where, so there's a phrase I want you to really remember. And it's, do I have 15 years of experience? 15 years of learning and growth and skill building and value generation? Or do I have the same one year job 15 times? It is a huge difference. A lot of people have one year jobs for 15 consecutive years. They don't have 15 years of experience. So the last one, developing and implementing change and problem management processes that led to a 25% incident reduction within 18 months. Of these three people, which is the first one you want to call? The last one. Because they either hit the nail on the head and this is the person you want to talk to, or they completely alienated themselves, which is perfect because they're not good for you anyway. The best advice on dating sites is to be as offensive as possible to the people you don't want to date. <laughs> you will do better alienating people that aren't compatible with you than trying to be open to a wider audience or even saying, I want left-handed, six foot two, blonde hair, blue eyed people who have at least spent seven years overseas. Well, you're specific, but a lot of people that you couldn't match with, those aren't good qualities. Um, you know, if I was putting out a dating ad, luckily I don't have to. I, my tagline would be, I'm looking for someone who understands that the good knife doesn't go in the dishwasher. 
that person I'm going to match with. Um, so determine why you're unique and start to tell your story. So where's your story being heard? Um, I'm not going to read through the list, but we think about, okay, formally when I turn in a resume or a cover letter or I have an annual review or I'm having a, a, some sort of assessment or a one-on-one -on -one with a mentor or my LinkedIn profile. Well, your LinkedIn profile is actively being networked and searched. Um, companies are using LinkedIn as their primary, uh, search companies are using it as their primary vessel for finding people. I know this because for three years I built and managed a security services work stream that delivered software, and I get incessant job offers from people that pulled me out because of the keywords and the value I delivered, and they're jobs I am so unqualified for, like no hope. But they're looking for these things. They're, they're actively searching for people like you, but are they finding you? Um, being here and networking, um, building relationships, going to professional organizations, the, um, social networking with family and friends, it's amazing. Um, I think it's like over 80% of all jobs are filled on referral. So you've already, if you're not going, yes? Sorry. Yes? You said something that kind of flagged me. You said that you get offers for jobs that you look at and say, I have no hope for. Yeah. Would you, would you engage them in the conversation? Because obviously there's something that you put on your LinkedIn that they like. Right. So I tell the story of building the team and it contains the domain or the area because that helps reinforce my brand. If I could build a team that can deliver security software, then obviously I know, one, how to build a team, how to run a delivery organization, and in a highly regulated, high stress, panic job, which is security, which is also why I got out. Horrible, like rough, <laughs> great pay, double your salary, but holy cow, you earn it. So part of the problem is that's not core to my brand that I have on LinkedIn, but it, it pops up with search. So I'm, op so I'm accidentally optimized where there's a very low target market. If you search LinkedIn for business analyst, holy cow, it's gonna weed through. So they're filtering all the way through, but if you're looking for somebody with security experience in certain areas, that's why it's popping. So I, I answer them nicely because you never know, and I say, hey, thank you for contacting me. Actually, I specialize in organizational change, which is why I took that role. Um, if you want to forward the job to me, I'll look at the people that I know from that industry and I'm happy to forward it along. If you see an opportunity where someone is looking to build centers of excellence, um, revamp their PMO or um, uh, BA practice, or drive innovation and cultural change, then please reach out to me. So I, I refocus them on my unique statement depending on where they're coming from. Unless I don't like where they're advertising and then I'm saying, thank you, not interested, and click and move on. So let's take a look at a few people and what they have on LinkedIn. So normally, especially if I'm doing this for a local chapter, I actually pull the board members from the chapter and pull their LinkedIn profiles. You all are lucky. I didn't know who was going to be here or who you know, so I didn't do that. So I pulled a few general people. So I want you to take a, a quick look. These are a few notes on the left-hand side about this person. So they've got their certifications. Um, they have no overview or positioning statement. So there's no lead statement that gives me a headline. And this is like, you don't want to bury the headline. If you read USA Today, buy a copy of USA Today when you're doing your marketing. Look at the headlines, looking at the layout. They are awesome at telling you why you would want to read an article. Um, they've got, they've got, they're on a board of directors, which is going to help them stand out. You can tell they're a senior program manager. They've got recommendations and awards. So all in all, pretty good. But then, I also know that she's got 108 Facebook friends, good or bad. Um, she likes an animal shelter, which might be good or bad. Um, she's actually a member of PMI UK, um, and uh, she won a, another award. So these are all things that you can search for and find. And if you don't think that managers are searching, or especially prospective employers are searching, they absolutely are. Um, I had an interview with somebody that was highly qualified, and they thought they had the job in the bag. They really, they were like, this is it, I knocked it. Um, and the interview went pretty well. And then after they had asked their questions, I said, I have one final question for you. Looking for the fact that you charge $5,000 for every speaking event and $400 an hour to provide professional mentoring, 
why would I believe that you're going to have any time to work on this job because we don't allow outside employment? And if you want to hear a head hitting the floor at shock, they're like, what do you mean? How did you know? And I said, well, you mentioned on LinkedIn that you wrote a book. I searched Amazon and couldn't find it. I found it on the internet and found you co-wrote a book with four other people, which is awesome, great, congratulations, that's awesome. And then in the book, in your bio, it references your website. So I found your company website where it says you're a professional speaker and mentor and running all this off. So are you just using me as a placeholder until your coaching career takes off? <laughs> Interview's over. I mean, I knew, I kind of knew beforehand, but I also wanted to talk to her because maybe that was out there and stale. But, you know, that unfortunately eliminated her from the job because I knew she wasn't serious about what we were doing. So, what about this one? Only information is they've got a link to a PDF file that has every uh, an entire, very condensed piece of information about them. Would you click through? They could be awesome, but you're never going to know. You're not even going to bother. Um, so this is an awesome person, really great. Um, and you can tell what they've done. I mean, it's, it's all of these things, and it gets lost in the noise. But if you search or if you look at Facebook, and unfortunately, every single picture I saw posted had this person drinking. <laughs> it's Facebook. It's social. They, did, uh, they go to theater. They do a lot of events. But there was always a drink. Now, they fixed that since then, but this is so great. I have to continue to use it. Um, and I'm actually going to speak to where this person is on Friday. So uh, I'll get to catch up and see how their profile's doing. <laughs> so whether you know it or not, this is part of our branding. Um, Good friend of mine, um, and awesome, and I'm still trying to get her to help. Um, a little bit, you know, uh, later career, so hasn't adopted anything. So that's her LinkedIn profile. She has one friend that we have in common, and we work together, like, every single week. Um, she does have a cute picture of a squirrel in her yard um, and some travel pictures. So her branding is horrible. I mean, there is no branding, and just extremely damaging. So as we're looking at this, it's not, there's not one or two things. It's about building a foundation. So this is where we work backwards. First, what is the action or desired outcome? What is it you're hoping to get? And you can have different outcomes. I have many different outcomes that all align to, to where I want to be five years from now. I sold off a internet portal that I was running that was, I was deeply passionate about. And I finally had to decide that it wasn't where it wasn't going to be part of where I was going to be five years from now. It was just a distraction, and I shut it down and transferred it over to somebody who could who could keep on that legacy. Broke my heart. Still hate doing that, but it was it, I had to align to what my goals were and the actions I wanted. In order to get somebody to take an action, you've got to connect with them through your marketing message. So they've got to have they've got to want to buy you. They've got to want to buy the product. They've got to want to ask for you or transfer you to your project. Half the jobs I've currently had at my company have been because I have been pulled to areas where they needed me, not jobs that I wanted to have when I started. It's an honor. Also, it's a challenge. But um, it's because I was able to prove myself in difficult situations. I also found out some doors were closed because I had made some career-limiting moves with some people in the organization I didn't respect and their network extended a little further than I assumed. Um, and so it shuts some doors for me. But it's OK. I've rebuilt that since then. In order to connect with that marketing message, you've got to demonstrate, which means you've got to have stories and examples. So I've been sharing some stories with you. And hopefully those stories will be memorable. Um, an awesome book, Made to Stick, by Dan and Chip Heath, is all about why stories are memorable, why certain things like urban legends um, are easy to retell, but you, I'll bet very few people here could restate their company mission statement, let alone explain it. It's not memorable. You've got to be memorable. Like this morning, think about it. You can remember one of the stories. I haven't heard him speak in, I think, two or three years at one of these events, and I was like, oh my word, here comes the chicken parm story. I knew that one. Um, Greg, I know, and I was thinking about this this morning, but while I was um, looking through this, I know his story about the Aryan inmate massaging the black gentleman's feet. That is always going to be a part of my life. Talk about 
a value proposition. If he can make that change, is there anything he can't do? So if I want something that's really hope and change, Greg's the one I'm going to go to. In order to be able to tell stories and examples, you've got to have a mound of supporting facts. And people may never see this. So all that noise that we're pushing to the front now needs to disappear. And it needs to boil down into stories. Those stories need to connect with your audience, which means you have to have different stories in different situations. And it has to connect so that people take that action. So when you're looking at this, your marketing materials, they've got to be consistent. You've got to have a consistent look, a feel, a message. It will happen naturally because it will be part of you. If it's sincere, if it's honest, it will come through. Um, it takes a while. You'll revise. Um, it, I've gone through a lot of changes with mine, but I'm, I'm really happy, and I think I've got one that will adapt for me now. It's got to be appropriate for your audience, and it's got to, be, it's got to provide value. So this is also where we forget. If, like right now, this whole premise is you're in this room because I'm providing value to you. You would not be here if you didn't expect to get something out of it. But then why am I here? It's because I've got to get value out of this too. And I get value out of the engagement. I get value out of the lives that I touch. And if I can just make one small change and help people, that I, I feel great about that. So as you're telling the story, that story needs to leave that person just a little bit better, a little happier, maybe a little sadder, um, a little bit more motivated, a little bit closer on your side. Whatever it is, they've got to get a value out of it. So thinking about um, all the areas, if you don't have business cards, not company business cards, but personal business cards, you can get them for free online. There are numbers of sites that will let you pick a template and do a basic card for free. You can do bulk orders for super, super cheap. I think I order 10,000 at a time and hand them out to anybody who will take them because you never know. Um, I'm going to talk about overviews and resumes, um, testimonials. LinkedIn has made it so much easier for testimonials now. It's okay to ask, but try asking or entering into a conversation. Or put a recommendation out for somebody, and a lot of times they'll reciprocate. Um, my old team, I've now had enough time since I managed them that I can go back and I'm going to write recommendations for them. Because also, I want them to tell their story about how I touched their lives. Because they've told me personally, but I need them to tell you all because I have no idea which one of you wants to hire me next. Or I might do a project where you might want to have fly me up so I can come speak because I love traveling. Um, support uh, LinkedIn, we talked about a blog, a website, whatever happens to be part of your material. So let's look at some goal and positioning statements. So think about this is we're going to talk about resumes a little bit, and do's and don'ts. So to work with a, comp a reputable company that emphasizes high level of productivity, creativity, and strong worth ethics, on and on, I'll let you read the rest. Is this a person we would, should be interested in? What is wrong with their positioning statement at the top of a resume? It's a bit too much. It's a bit wordy. It's, a, you, it, it's not clear and on point. It's more about what's in it for me. Bingo. This person hasn't provided you with any value of what they're going to do. It's all about them. And I know we do this at the start of our career when all we're thinking about is, I just came out of college and I'm totally clueless, but I think I can do some good stuff, so I'm looking for some place where I can learn where you need good stuff and I can do good stuff. I can understand that, but at our level, at our career, that's got to go away. Experienced project manager with over six years of project consulting, design, and development experience resulting in increased organizational performance. Better? Anything wrong or that could be better, even better about this? Yep. Yeah, there's no results, so there's no value. How many people here start a project with the goal of making your organization worse? <laughs> Intentionally damaging or hurting your organization? Don't raise your hand, please. Or raise your hand and give me your card so I can make a note and say, sorry, I'm not hiring you in the future. Um, every project is designed to provide a value. So all they've done is basically given you the definition of a project manager and said, hey, I delivered something that had value. Well, I hope so. That's what you're supposed to do. We don't give out cookies for that. Digital technologists focus on helping marketers strengthen their client relationships. 
through implementations of enterprise content management, e-commerce, and web analytics. On point, targeted to the audience that they're looking for, alienates every other job that they probably wouldn't be a good fit for. Now, I know the person who wrote this. They've been CFO for a company. There's other things they can do. Those stories will come out, but you don't lead with a CFO story if you don't want to be a CFO. They love marketing and being in the e-commerce and the web analytics space and helping drive those results. So that's the portion. That's the story because the action is to do more that they want is to do more of that. And then we get to listing out our companies. And then the worst case is we do a blurbathon, which is just slam in stuff. My favorite is I interviewed a business analyst of, of all people. It's like, your job is to write well and communicate. 17 pages. And they had copied and pasted the same tasks and skills and experiences for every single job. And they just got a little bit shorter each time. I mean, they wrote this one and then just deleted on down the line. And I was like, no. Imagine what your requirements document would be. I, I ooh, no. Instead, treat it like you would an agenda, a schedule, a requirements document, an overview, a presentation to executive stakeholders. Um, be targeted. Use bullets. Use headlines. The goal of your resume is not to get the job. Your goal of the resume is to get through HR so you can talk to a human being. That's the only thing is, is you've got to get to talk to somebody. So it's got to have enough of the garbage to get you through the gatekeepers so you can talk to a human. And then the whole purpose is to get them excited so they want to talk to you, so you can tell the full story, and then they'll hire you at exorbitant salaries with uh, extended profit sharing plans, right? <laughs> if you can get it. OK. Um, so as you're looking through, um, we'll do a little bit. So the first thing is, um, you've got to demonstrate value by saying what you've done in the past and implying that that value can go to the future. So you can't necessarily, if I told you, when I come to your company, I'm going to be able to um, increase productivity in an operational area by at least 30%. I've got a track history that says I can do that. But your company might be really good and really efficient and already be pretty good with Lean Six Sigma, and I might not even be able to squeeze 3% out. And you're not going to believe me because you know what it's like to work for your company, so why would you believe that I could pull that off? Um, but if I can say that I um, increased productivity by 800% for a warehouse company by implementing a warehouse solution and automating their invoice process, now you know what I've done, and you might believe I could do that again. Not the same percentages, but you, there's, a, there's a history. I'm building the case that I'm really good at certain stuff. If you cannot, when you run out of goals and val, uh, values, then what you want to do is state things that are domain specific or critical job skills people will look for. So the first thing is, tell your value. Then next, tell something that you're good at that people want to buy. Security is hot. You cannot get a job in finance and healthcare unless there's something that says finance and healthcare in your resume. It's really silly. I've had this argument with my dad, who's a doctor, and he honestly believes nobody can develop a medical system who is not a doctor. I'm like, I believe that doctors know what they need out of a medical system, but I also know doctors can't build software to save their lives. And it would be overly complicated, and no one would be able to read what they wrote anyway. <laughs> So you've got so look for the systems, look for the areas that are part of your story and the action, and that set you apart in the market. Um, I wish this was a joke, but <laughs> use correct spelling, grammar, verb tense. You can't proof your own work. Get many people to proof it. No matter how many times I do these presentations or looking at my materials, I just discovered that in one of my key headlines, I've had a grammar mistake for like seven years that no one's caught. Because our brains, and if you've done any of the brain puzzles, our brains auto-correct for silly stuff, so that stuff can slip past. Um, look for it and, and, and try and be as clear and concise as possible. I don't care what you've done for the most part. Um, Two-page resume and abbreviate old jobs. Um, 
I know we want to say our long work history. Focus in on the most recent. You're, again, it's not that everybody needs to know your whole family history and your Ancestry.com lineage to hire you for a job. They need to know enough to want to talk to you. Um, everything you do has to communicate for that single job. And this is where people hate it. I don't want to have to write a resume for every single job. And I'm going to sh teach you how to shortcut that, too. Um, and communicate in headlines. So two examples. Developed a B2B ordering uh, and management system, which resulted in an 800% increase in productivity. And that's quantifiable. Um, designed a new product platform, which decreased client development time by 80%, client cost by 40%, while increasing profit margin by 135%. You probably want to talk to this person. That's the goal. There's no long story. You don't know where this was done, what industry. It's a headline. It gets you excited. Think about if you were going out to see a movie, and the movie was like a new, exciting tale from M. Night Shyamalan, where you find out at the end that Bruce Willis is really dead the entire movie. No. You, it, it's the trailer. Think about movie trailers. Think about advertisement. This is what you're going for. So I, really, so I really like overviews um, rather than resumes because they're faster, they're easier. So the chronological experience, I hope we all agree, is just a silly way of doing it. And then we add a cover letter to say, I'm really, 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 really good for this position, and you should hire me because I've done these three things. So why not put that in an overview and really sell yourself? So I put together, and the branding, again, the format needs to match your industry, needs to match your market. If you're in a more conservative area, like Canada tends to be, this may be a little much. It's out of people's comfort zone. That's okay. Um, and I really use a rule of three. Um, three key things, three key values that I want to get across, three value stories for each, and I include a quote, a testimonial, somebody else saying in their own words, and if you'd like, on my card, there's samples available. I'm about to rewrite all of them again because I decided that they're all marketing me for the jobs I don't want anymore, and now I want to do different things, so I need to rewrite them. But these are one pages, and I used to have 12 of them. Um, I had one for consulting, one for tech, one for PMOs, and now I think I'm going to be down to three because I've really narrowed down the jobs I want to have. Um, it's easy to adapt. It's memorable. The job I have now is because of this. I sent this over to somebody who was trying to bring me into the company. They forwarded it around, and it got forwarded to close to 100 people in the company because they were like, you're never going to believe what this guy did. You've got to take a look at this. And then one of them called me. And I couldn't get past, couldn't get past, couldn't get an interview in there. It wasn't going anywhere. And finally, my buddy was like, have you ever done anything in banking? I was like, well, I rewrote all the call center training for Nations Bank at the time. And they're like, OK, hold on. Had an interview the next day, and I started on Monday. They just had a box that had to be checked. Um, so it's got to be visually appealing. It needs to tell the story um, that you're looking for uh, that's tied to your audience's core need. So I actually have an inventory, a whole library of headlines and stories and different ways of writing them that I pull and reassemble depending on what I want to do. So if I want to do and look for a business architecture position, I say, what are the three best things that you would look for in a business architect. And then I find those three values, and I look for the three best value stories that fit into each. And they won't all fit, but I've got to create that. So I might have to modify my value to fit. Like, a good business architect should be good at building teams. Because chances are, if you're hiring a business architect, you're probably hiring someone to start a business architect practice, which is more fun. So my area might be team building. Um, you've got to figure out what it is for you. It can be at the bottom that if you're really looking for a general one, you may need to highlight a few of those key skills, key abilities, niche domain experience or knowledge that sells you for the job you want. So it's okay for your value to be just a bulleted list, not of good communicator or Microsoft Word, but I'm expert at implementing HR systems. Um, and there's a link to examples. I also really love and recommend you develop case studies. And develop these for every project you do. Um, I, you sh I, uh, PowerPoint is a very easy way to do. Just come up with a template. I like using either a problem solution or a challenge outcome. So I tell you, I give you the lead in. I give you the headline of what was happening. And then I tell you how I made it better. 
because if I don't make it better, I'm not communicating my value. And then I love having a quote off to the side, because if I tell you, hey, I'm awesome, it's better if one of you says that I'm awesome. And if I say, if I, so it's the same thing. When I forward, I tell people, this is why Susie is great and you should hire her for this position. Again, this should be, should, should be consistent with your branding, with your format. Um, design matters. I never believed this, especially being in IT most of my career. And then I saw it work time and time again that the same material in clearly laid out, visually appealing, gave people an emotional connection to your content that wasn't available elsewhere. Um, also, the earlier you can start <coughs> a matrix that is clients or skills or projects and all of the things you did, whether it's industry, whether it's um, skills, so that whole thing, everything we're dumping on our resume should be in a matrix. And you can have it available, so if you're in an interview and someone's like, wow, how did you come up with this? And it's like, actually, I have this 17 by 42 matrix of everything I've done, and then I pick the stories that go best. This really helps you go back and tell stories. It also helps you get your BA and PM certification, because now you've got a mapping of your project experience and the dates to the skills you used. Just Pick the skills, hide everything that isn't core to the body of knowledge, and only claim those when you're listing the skills. So this will help you a lot as you're in a core, uh, uh, a, um, core uh, key contributor or um, a team lead position. As you move into more discrete roles, this doesn't ends up not becoming important as important. It becomes larger stories, more enterprise change related stories. So I promised you that if you wanted to destroy your career, I was going to show, tell you how. And so here it is: the top mistakes you can make. So unintentionally inserting your personal life into your professional life. And the key here is unintentionally. And a lot of us, especially Gen Xers who are a little bit bitter and baby boomers who won't adjust at all cannot stand the fact that millennials make no distinction, that everything is tied in together. But for them, that is their life, that is their message, and that's okay. You've just got to do it consistently. So you've got to know when it crosses over. If anybody tries to link on me on Facebook, I'm sorry, I'm going to decline it. My Facebook is people that I am truly friends, meaning you call me up and ask me to help you hide a body or move furniture, <laughs> you're my Facebook friend. Everybody else at work, needs to stay on LinkedIn. Um, trying to be everything for everybody. We, we're afraid of losing out on the market. And, and it's true, you will miss out on opportunities. But you're missing out on opportunities that you're not a perfect fit for, that you may not want it. Now there are times you may have to broaden your search, broaden your area, but then that's where you use an overview and tell the stories that laser focus into that particular job. Um, misrepresent yourself. You think you can get away with it, you think you can exaggerate a little bit, most likely you're going to get busted. Um, so try and be honest, be on the conservative side, be able to back up, like when I use the numbers, I've got to be able to explain how I came up with those and I'm not just making them up. And the reason I know it's 800% is I know what their staffing projections were to be able to manage that line of business for a new client before we put in the system based on their current workload. After we put in the system, they had estimated how many people they were going to hire, and it was one-eighth of, uh, sorry, that's not right. Sorry, it was 800% um, lower than they had projected. Um, you, we all have a hindrance of knowledge. We all assume that people know or have our perspective, so things make sense to us. And the thing we forget is each of you, if I asked you to describe this session or to describe something that happened or to, to tell me what was on the food trays this morning, everyone here saw something different, experienced something different. You can't get past that. So don't, you've got to get past assuming that people are going to know what you're talking about and make sure that, that they actually do. Um, if you really want to go nowhere, then do nothing. That's really easy. Um, and so now, leaving this room, I want you to start thinking about and taking action. So let's go back to the conclusions. Marketing is the exploitation of your uniqueness. Find what's unique and find out how to exploit it to your advantage. This needs to become part of your everyday 
and consciously part of your everyday activities. When you're talking with someone, when you're running project meetings, make sure that the best of you is coming through. Or as we say on our team, don't leave too much of yourself in the trunk when you come to work. Focus on your value and you've got to connect personally with people. As I've met people today, as I've reacquainted with people I know, I've told different stories. I've tried to find the ones that are relevant, the lessons that are relevant to the people I'm talking about. And so um, I've got to make sure that, that that's part of my day and I learn to tell those stories better. Um, with all of your sessions, I cannot tell you how important it is to provide feedback on all the speakers. This makes this event better every year. It helps them decide what, tar what tracks, what topics you want to see, what you like. Um, and also e even on individual speakers. So please take time to fill these out and, and be honest and let the, the conference know what to do. Um, again, uh, make sure and connect and I'll um, on the presentation when you download a few resources. I've got some advice on storytelling, um, three steps to, um, to a better position, meeting, connecting, and taking action. Um, the book rec uh, representations, a brand called You, uh, Lynchpin, Made to Stick, What Colors Your Parachute is a, a great one. Skills and Skills Finder, I did edit it. Strengths Finder. It basically is, I think, replacing What Colors Your Parachute, but helps you basically figure out what your value is, what is core, so I recommend uh, that. Um, so what I want to do is, we've got uh, four minutes left, is I want a few people to volunteer. Um, what is something that came out of this last hour that made this time worthwhile? What's something that's new, that's exciting, a change that you think you're going to make, something you might do differently? I want to know, what are any of the takeaways that you had that you thought were most important from this last hour? Yes? Absolutely. I'm going to go into my LinkedIn, though, and, and update <laughs> my, my value proposition statement, like, you know, what it is. I mean, I don't think mine's as bad as some of them that were, you know, like, yeah. I don't think the word business analyst actually even shows up in my value proposition, but yeah, I'm going to take another look at it. Excellent. And you can turn off in your settings, notif uh, change notifications. So every time you edit your job, anytime you edit something, it blasts it out to your network. Mm -hmm. I have that turned off always. Because that way you can consistently edit and change. Now, if you have a big thing that you want people to know about, there's two options. You can turn it on, make the change, and then it'll publish. or just do a post and say, I'm really excited that I just joined XYZ project team and we're going to be working on this awesome new stuff. Thanks to the team, I'm looking forward to working with you. Hashtag awesome, <laughs> however it is. Um, so I, I recommend turning that off, but if you really want to keep popping, then go ahead. What are some other things on this side of the room? Yes? Uh, just getting some quotes for people. Um, yep. Yeah, a little bit worried because if you're working full time somewhere, how that um, and it depends on the company, um, where it comes from, uh, or, or how they feel about that. Um, you can also, as you get reviews, or if you're doing postmortems, you can say, listen, I appreciate what you said. Would it be okay if I use that as a quote to share with other people or to share with reviews? I used to do um, a, a quarterly survey. I had one uh, for me as a manager, and then one for me uh, for clients. And, it's, and it basically was a short five-question survey selection, and then it was like, would you please share a testimonial that I can use publicly because I'd like to share your comments uh, with how I helped you? And 80% of the people will do that. And LinkedIn makes it a little easier, but a little less scary. Can you use the, the LinkedIn testimonials on your overview? That's They're the published. They publicly endorsed you on a public website. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you don't even have to ask. You can if you want to say, hey, I'm going to use this and this too, but I wouldn't worry about it. Yes? I just want to mention um, what we presented today is really valuable. Thank you. And it's more than what I expected. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I set your expectations low enough at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one last thing and we'll close yeah, up. So for me, it's totally depressing, not you. It's me that it looks like I really need to do a lot of work and really yeah. get out from the comfort zone. My comfort zone is not networking, definitely need to do it. I hate writing, definitely need to do it. So very depressing. Um, <laughs> but use it as inspiration. I am terrified of crowds and public speaking. Oh, okay. That's it makes me so <laughs> nervous. And I, for, and, and I mean, this was horrible, but at an early age, I knew it was going to be a problem, and I've continued to force myself. 
now, after about the first two minutes, the terror subsides, and then I get into a rhythm, and it's okay. So it is painful. Change is never easy. And it's not that repeat something seven times. No, it's nine months of changing and being consistent before it can go. So we hit the end of our time. Um, I am happy to answer any other questions um, as we're changing out for the next speaker, but I am going to be rude and start packing up to get out of their way. My business cards are up here, so please feel free to grab one, uh, especially if you want to see any of the other presentations. Enjoy the conference. Thank you for coming.